speaker, I must state for the record that this house is not oblivious of the fact that the crisis we are in is self-inflicted. A crisis created by President Akufuado, by the Vice President who is manager of the economic management team, who chairs the economic management team, has been a total disaster. As he goes around the country campaigning now, he only talks about digitalization. He does not account for his stewardship as chair of the economic management team. Then we have the finance minister, who, Mr. Speaker, the president told us, assured his party and our colleagues who rebelled against the finance minister, that after the IMF program, this minister will be shown the door. He will be asked to go home. The president clearly, as has become his stock in trade, cannot be trusted to keep his word and has kept the finance minister in office. That is very, very disappointing. But Mr. Speaker, talking about the IMF program, I was really surprised to see the minister's budget statement at page 6. This is a minister who assured this house and assured the Ghanaian people that we will not go to the IMF. He will not lead us to the IMF. Now, Mr. Speaker, at page 6, paragraph 36, the minister states, and I quote, Mr. Speaker, it is instructive to note that our journey towards securing an IMF supported program has been characterized by speed and tact. Incredible, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> the man who says he won't go to the IMF now says we should give him credit that he has gone with speed and tact. Where is credibility? Where is principle? Elsewhere, ministers will resign when they make a promise, they make a pledge, and they can't keep it. In Ghana, under President Kufuado, they say we should applaud them. That what they said they won't do, now they've done it with speed and tact, <laughs> with alacrity. So we should, we should applaud them. <clears throat> now, Mr. Speaker, ahead of this media review, Ghanaian women had agitated strongly that this media review should address a very important matter, a matter that borders on human rights. And Mr. Speaker, I recall that you also spoke emphatically, which was well received by the Ghanaian people, that the media review should abolish taxes on sanitary parts. It is an embarrassment that such a gross human rights issue did not receive attention from the finance minister. And Mr. Speaker, this is a matter that the majority of our population, in Ghana, women are in the majority. There were demonstrations. This house was petitioned. The Right Honorable Speaker was petitioned. The Women's Week of the Socialist Movement of Ghana demonstrated. Gender activists demonstrated against period poverty, against the assault on womanhood. We know it is leading to absenteeism in our schools. I recall as Deputy Minister of Education, we had to roll out a program to address that, the Free Sanitary Pass Initiative under the Secondary Education Improvement Project. Here we are, Ghanaian women looking up to the Minister for Finance. He comes and doesn't say a word. The height of insensitivity. And Mr. Speaker, I think that this House must establish strongly that we are totally appalled by the Minister's insensitivity. Now, Mr. Speaker, the finance minister tells us in the midst of this crisis, the chaos that he has created, the pain, the anguish, the suffering of our people, that he has turned a corner. This economy has turned a corner. And that things are beginning to look good. Mr. Speaker, sometimes you wonder if this finance minister lives in Ghana with us. My colleagues have dealt with the worsening macroeconomic indicators, so I do not want to go there. Only a few weeks ago, Mr. Speaker, the Ghana Registered Nurses and Midwives Association put out a statement and said that in 2022, by their account, Ghana has lost more than 4,000 of their members, their nurses, are living in droves for better living conditions, for greener pastures. Then they added, Mr. Speaker, and this was a statement signed by the General Secretary, Dr. David Tinkran Chum, 
that only this year, first half of this year, between January and July, another 4,000 have left. They added that 10,209 have served notice. They've already written to the GRNMA seeking clearance that they want to leave the country. Health experts are warning that if something is not done to reverse this trend, there will be no health worker in our hospitals. So when the finance minister says that they have turned a corner, which corner, Mr. Speaker? Ghana Statistical Service is telling us that unemployment has hit an all-time high. Only one quarter in 2022, 1.7 million Ghanaians drifted into the unemployment category. Mr. Speaker, these are lives. These are terrible statistics. As we speak, Mr. Speaker, road contractors are owed in excess of 15 billion Ghana cities. They've not been paid. NAPCO workers who were laid off several months now, they have not been paid. Exempted bondholders, the finance minister can't keep his pledge to them, including pensioner bondholders. So, Mr. Speaker, you look around from children, the youth, to the aged. Everybody is reeling under the mismanagement, the misrule, the gross incompetence, the insensitivity of this administration. And yet this finance minister comes here and tells us that he's, he's turned a corner. Mr. Speaker, he reminds me of the Ghanaian musician a few years ago who sang that interesting song, One Corner. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, after that song, there were lots of deaths. People were dancing with the song and the dance moves. People just go wild and go crazy. And that song killed so many people. I don't know if that's the kind of corner that, that the finance minister is talking about. The corner, the corner of death, the one corner of injuries, the one corner of casualties. It's not clear if it's that patapa kind of corner the, the, the finance minister is referring to. But clearly, all around us, we see despondency, we see depression, we see total pain and anguish. Then, Mr. Speaker, the finance minister also makes a very interesting comment at page 16, paragraph 84. Under arrears, clearance, and prevention strategy, the finance minister tells this house that he is now implementing an arrears clearance and prevention strategy. And he says that, Mr. Speaker, as part of the measures to achieve the objective of bringing public finances back on a sustainable path, government is embarking on a number of expenditure efficiency drives, including the development and implementation of an arrears clearance and prevention strategy. Mr. Speaker, I submit today that this arrears clearance and prevention strategy is a sham. It's a total scam. If you look at public expenditure, Mr. Speaker, Take the National Cathedral alone. As we speak, we have asked government to abrogate that contract. They have refused to abrogate that contract. And so, all this time that the contract subsists, Ghana now owes an additional $52 million, Mr. Speaker. And that includes $29 million of certified outstanding certificates $13 million in interest payments and the suspension claims $10 million in total $52 million and you tell us that you are implementing an arrears prevention strategy Mr. Speaker, only a few days ago I put out another scandal, Mr. Speaker a scheme to, to, to rape 187, rape the Ghanaian the, 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 the Ghanaian uh, uh, treasure of 187 million Ghana cities with the Attorney General providing a lopsided AG's opinion without the input of GRA and the Minister of Finance. 187.3 billion. And you have the President's cousin, Gabi Ochidako, championing that. Mr. Speaker, we cannot continue this way. I submit that Ghana is where we are, not because of lack of revenue, not because we lack money. Oh, I have remember your time is up. Mr. Speaker, I want to be 30 seconds with your permission. 30 seconds. Just to, po to place on record that, Mr. Speaker, if you look at petroleum revenues, Mr. Speaker, throughout the entire period of the NDC, we have done the analysis. We received only $2.8 billion. They have received, under President Kufado, 
I'm, I'm even being generous. Five point two billion dollars. Five point two billion dollars. So our issue as a country, Mr. Speaker, is not lack of revenue, but it's misrule, it's mismanagement. And when they talk about breaking the eight, what we must break is to break the corruption, break the ineptitude, break the cluelessness, break the visionlessness, break the insensitivity. That is what the Ghanaian people will do next year. Let me begin by expressing my own colleagues. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I will proceed to offer my comments on the review by the minister. And as I started off, I think we should thank the minister for the review, for updating us on our effort to overcome the economic challenges resulting not just from our economic management recently, but some of the historical weaknesses that have characterized the management of our economy. Mr. Speaker, I premise my comment on paragraph 40 of the minister's speech. And with your permission, I read. Mr. Speaker, as a nation, we must and will prevail. Indeed, our only recourse is to be successful at the upcoming first review of the program and that is the IMF program in September 2023, and all other subsequent reviews. We are therefore respectfully calling on every member of, the, of this August House and fellow Ghanaians to support these reforms. Mr. Speaker, this is a court duty. And as we offer our comments on the minister's statement today, we must demonstrate that we are exchanging ideas to help improve the economy and that we are not here to spell doom for our own economy or to score political points that in the end will be unhelpful to the cause of developing our people. The, Mr. Speaker, why has it become necessary to respond to this court duty? It has become necessary, Mr. Speaker, because the IMF program and the reference is the 17th in our nation's life. If we add the Structural Adjustment Program and the HIPIC program, this is the 19th time we are seeking development partner bailout. We all know why. Mr. Speaker, we have been running for development partner bailout because we have been doing two wrong things. First, we have been spending money we do not have. But secondly, we have been spending on expenditures that have to be imported. It is this twin problem, Mr. Speaker, that has brought the country to where we are today. So, so Mr. Speaker, as we respond, as we respond to this call to help our own country overcome our economic challenges, what should we do? Mr. Speaker, what we should do, perhaps, is more clearly stated in what we should not do. We should stop putting pressure on government to spend on projects for which we have no money. And especially now, we should be asking government to spend on projects for which we have already committed the economy. Let the areas, the areas that have piled, some of them very historical, let us put the resources we have into those areas. 
let us stop again putting pressure on government to take on new commitments. And Mr. Speaker, I say this on behalf of the Finance Committee, we will be looking to support government and to ensure that the resources we have go into existing projects instead of taking on additional projects. And we do this fully conscious that it is the point of government itself that this is how it intends to live, to help the economy live within its means. But Mr. Speaker, it will not be enough. It will not be enough to just rationalize expenditure. It is important that as we pay for these expenditures, that we check wastage. Mr. Speaker, this economy and the management of our country are all too familiar with wastage in the public sector. Once we plan within our means, Mr. Speaker, we also have to take steps to ensure that the public financial management strategies that have been outlined in the Act are enforced. And I take this opportunity again to call on members that we ought not to contribute to these irregularities. We should be checking these irregularities. Mr. Speaker, but it will not be sufficient to just handle expenditure. We need to ramp up our efforts to mobilize more domestic revenue. Everyone would have to pay their fair share of the taxes. If we want to lower taxes, we should do so for everybody. The practice of keeping our taxes in place and yet seek to exempt selected individuals from the payment of those taxes is completely unhelpful. We should get everybody, Mr. Speaker, to contribute to our efforts at mobilizing domestic revenue. By exempting individuals in the name of investment promotion, Mr. Speaker, we create two problems. The first is that we deny Ghana the opportunity of communicating that our investment climate is friendly because the taxes are in place. But more importantly, Mr. Speaker, by encouraging the practice of selecting individuals and... But the political thief steals your future, your career, your education, your health, and your business. Number two, the hilarious part is that the ordinary thief will choose whom to rob. But you are the one who choose the political thief to rob you. Because we choose them. We vote them. We blindly say we are not blind. Who is deceiving who? The ridiculous part of the whole issue is that we will fight to defend and protect our belongings from the ordinary thief. Is it not? But we fight each other to defend and protect the political thief. Is that not what we do? Thugs will be fighting themselves to protect those that are stealing our career, stealing our job, stealing our health, stealing our success. What a shame. If you reach a certain stage in life and there is nobody who can look you in the eye and tell you the truth, you are doomed. And that is where our country has got into. We need to rescue this country. We are lying. And I feel very terrible as a Ghanaian at this time. This country is in serious trouble, ladies and gentlemen. We are in serious trouble. We need to rescue this country, ladies and gentlemen. The presidency has been so depraved, so, so muddied, so dirty, that I tell you in all sincerity as a Ghanaian, that I feel terribly sad today as a Ghanaian. We need to rescue this country. Wallahi. Insha Allah. Please don't cry. We shall rescue our country. Government is broke, government is broke. But people are spending billions to go inside the government that is broke. Have you ever seen a minister who resigned because government is broke before? Government has no money. Have you ever seen a governor who said, 
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, when I was elected, I thought the government had money. Now I discover government has no money, I resign. Have you ever seen it? Government has no money, but they are bringing money out at election time. Where is that money coming from? So they are lying. What is happening is that there are two types of wicked people in government. Type one, they eat current money. Any money they find in government, they will eat it. They are wicked about that one. There is type two. Type two, they eat current money and future money. They will say, ah, oh, my term will end next year. When I leave, how will I eat money? Let me borrow money now. I borrow money of the future and eat it now. Right, hello. Good morning, welcome to the show. This is Good Morning Ghana Live on Metro TV. It's a Friday, the fourth day of August, 2023. By His grace, we're live and we're here. We're yet another edition of the show. Our gratitude to the Most High God for the rare privilege of being alive and, of course, the opportunity of having another conversation around the top stories making around here in our dear republic. I'll let you into our panel for the morning's conversation shortly. Most of our newspapers, uh, I always say that newspapers love holidays. Uh, they are holidaying. Uh, today is uh, Founders Day. Founders, so S apostrophe. Uh, 4th of August. So I think we have only the Catholic standard, the good old Catholic standard. Uh, legis legislature must be strengthened to restore hope in democracy. That's Bishop Jane Fee. That's the Catholic standard. And the uh, World Youth Day offers a chance to build a more peaceful world. Caritas Ghana assists victims of humanitarian crisis in four dioceses. Stop putting hot food in plastics, Ghanaians advised. So that's the good old Catholic standard that made it to the newsstands. But um, of course, there's um, um, a lot um, to discuss this morning. And uh, on my newsreel, I have quite a a lot of stories here. Parliament sets up committee to probe National Cathedral project. There's another one here. Uh, ask uh, one of our panelists to confirm that. Bagman refers 187 million kitchen cabinet scandal to finance committee for investigation. I, I found that a bit, uh, I didn't know it was on the plate. Model for National Cathedral project most reckless in Ghana's history are black choir. We're strictly enforcing our zero financing policy, Bank of Ghana. Ghana Integrity Initiative, GACC call for urgent passage of conduct of public officers bill. Ekufuado, Baumia government taking Ghana to the worst form of IMF program, minority leader. Guta raises concern of astronomical port tariff increases. Uh, Parliament orders finance minister to present DDEP for consideration. And um, NCA scandal, Ekufuado pardons former deputy national security coordinator. So those are some of the headlines uh, as far as our newsreel is concerned and what the Metro Newsroom has been covering um, today. All right, so we'll take a break. We'll return a panel and the conversation. Enjoy the fruits of your labor, they say. But as humans, aging and physical infirmity stands our way of enjoying our mansions and homes. It often becomes challenging, if not impossible, to use our stairways day in, day out. With portable American pneumatic vacuum elevators, PVEs, you are assured of unlimited enjoyment of your mansions and homes. It's a self-supported elevator for vertical movement of humans and goods at homes and offices. The original comes in three custom-made models with wheelchair accessibility call it luxury but it's a necessary imperative for vertical mobility do not let aging or infirmity limit you get one for your easy vertical mobility at home it's affordable and can be installed in just three days without modification to your existing building it's however easier to incorporate it at the construction stage we also have traditional fuji elevators and escalators for your high-rise buildings and malls visit lifts and elevators company limited at sakumono for your elevators nationwide for free consultation to call or whatsapp us on 0200 535 lifts and elevators the elevator people 
Betway is your gateway to a theme park full of gaming excitement. A whirlpool of wonder where your favorite games come to life. Where you can take to the skies with max payouts that reach into the millions. All in the palm of your hand. Visit betway.com.gh. Terms and conditions apply. Betway is regulated by the Gaming Commission of Ghana. No under 18. Bet responsibly. Betway. Bet your way. JA Plant Pool Ghana Limited has introduced the all new Jetto X70 Plus to the market. Jetto X70 Plus is a modern, spacious family SUV with a stylish design, advanced technology, and outstanding quality that promises you luxury with affordability. Jetto X70 Plus comes with an exceptional engine warranty of four years or 100,000 kilometers, giving you the ultimate peace of mind for years to come. And our dedicated service center at J Plan Pool offers you a wide range of car services and world class customer support. Be exclusive and outstanding. Get yourself the all new Jetto X70 Plus. Get in touch with J Plan Pool Ghana Limited on 020. 0000831 or info at jplantpoolgh.com. Visit jplantpoolgh.com for more information. My name is John, and this is my long time crush, my cookie dip in strawberry yogurt. On this scorching hot afternoon on our way back from a long job hunt, we met this good Samaritan who offered us a six weeks later. Play a special wedding reception for our bride and groom. And there she is, my cookie, dipped in someone else's yogurt. Who holds the mula? Holds the shot. Play game back games, the easiest lottery to play and win. Phone numbers from 0 to 9 up to 3 times daily to become one of our daily lucky winners. Dial star 946 hash to play now. Or you can also play online at www.gameparkgames.com. Game Park is regulated by the National Lottery. There's more blessing in giving than receiving. Kwa unu fear for you now and kobo the makers in Sri Anu de Ru. The pneumatological abrasion of the Lord revealed unto me this night that me and my household should go out into the world and bless the world. Makers Electronics Company Limited am up to 67% discount. I was selected appliances as well. This is what I call quintessential immaculatability. The Makers Electronics Company Limited. I will tie for Burkina Highway. I'm a Samai Zongo Junction. I'm a K Pharmacy Dining. Oh, yeah, Fatiman Boga Junction. A shaman, Valco Flat, Kumasi, a Hinema Cocobain, a Safu Wachi Hospital Junction, a few Kuma, number nine market, two and child man and dad about the makers blessing attack from 0552 222 253 and 0552 222 254. Terms and conditions apply. The same in Gatta Moon, I'm a sissy. Yamawa Kaba, the ban Nadum Auto Fix and Accessories. Aha, dear, a ban of KSC, see near one candia. Ubenya, be a view. Care be an anyhow, any new here. Yansu, you were winning before, or best son, we hear now. Nadum Auto Fix and Accessories, the Jume did here. A year twenty four seven oh. Yes, yes, you will engine. U break, battery, yes, a sour tie. Say, ban of car wash, dear. Yeah, well, I bet from Fidelity says Sima, you don't rock car engine, a brand so call engine name. Yes, sign your detailing, Mr. Say, you bet you can't move a BMO. Yeah, 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 yeah
enye ngwe no monku yesato car batteries ties rims any the keke kan manadum auto fix and accessories ema o car en sine de dem na enwa dwuma mao hwehwe ye chira kwan wo dan suma na sorry dan ho a eni kfc bon hwe ni mu e won kran se wo per information anansem bi se bia frezon 24 651-9369 Nadum Auto Fix and Accessories Who can you young crop papa papa? Repeat it again. Those who are coming to this administration thinking that it's an avenue for making a lot of money are going to be disappointed. <laughs> they better go to the private sector. That is where people make money, not in government. I've said it and I'll repeat it again. Those who are coming to this administration thinking that it's an avenue for making a lot of money are going to be disappointed. <laughs> they better go to the private sector. That is where people make money, not in government. I'm going to we on the Sikapon auto trade. Okay. And your forms are man for a bit failure when they pack our your office. Okay. So, okay. what if your phone should be prepared yeah, with you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh-huh. We, uh-huh. Oh, I'm not going to be able to pay for it. Hey! I'm not going to be able to pay for it. I'm not going to be able to pay for it. So, I'm not going to be able to pay for it. Okay. 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 E wo be kwa side de ha sikapon auto trade ye de ama amamfo aya register e bi wo honoma wo modi ye adwuma so Mr. Andrew Pobre ye see wo no no we nyina ye casa e ye work and pay casa e wo amamfo ho aya de abadada okay awu mu twi wo mu twi ye adwuma okay wo to ho se ye ka ya register yeah aha na we we e ye car bi ye container ye koyi ye duty car bi koyi ye ah container na e car ben e o e ye yi eh nizan quest okay ena na ke aso e ne shemu okay ene ka eniam bi ho okay so ho o ho nizan quest nizan quest wa go wa go ha ayi ayi family car ni bi sa yeah aha nti ye kokoyi ye no na hwa bi abrochire fo nti na me ka no sa ne ma we me firi he na ba sa abrochire nti wo either say wo mo firi ane kra ana so wo na de ba na hwa de fast asia no wa twere why mhm nti hwa de okay ye kwa koyi container no okay wo za eh ni ase ya ndc charges ha bo e ye na wo mo bai wo so ma ba ba ah wo de we paperless system no okay hwa charges e gusu o import duty okay import duty so se cash are no 58165 mm-hmm. points 46 we are no by import vat import vat no so ya 52492 it we processing fee na for in share no okay ecowas levy eh yes eh ecowas levy 1690 vehicle certification and also a Uh, I think it's a one one CD. Vehicle examination fee. Uh, three thousand one hundred and ninety nine. Network charge. One thousand one hundred and eighty six. Network charge VAT. And uh, also uh, uh, one fifty five. One fifty five. Network charge COVID nineteen health. Hey. And uh, also uh, uh, eleven eleven CDs. And a ship, uh, Ghana Shippers Authority. Uh, the fee. fee. 
And also, uh, nine CDs. Import national health insurance. And also, uh, 9,904. Network charge national health insurance. And 29, 000, uh, 29. IRS deposit. Internal revenue service tax deposit. Uh, 3,318. Ghana CD disinfection fee. 390. And so, we MOTI 5 CDs. Uh, import levy 104 special import le oh, import levy special, special import levy you know, six thousand seven hundred and sixty Ghana export and import bank levy and also two thousand five hundred and thirty five Ghana education trust fund and also nine thousand nine hundred and four network charge get fund levy twenty twenty nine cities inspection fee and also two hundred and sixty one African Union import levy. <laughs> Three three thousand. Mm. Uh, okay, uh, okay, three nine three thousand nine hundred and sixty one. Asana COVID nineteen had uh, COVID nineteen had recovery in a year three thousand. Yeah, uh, you know. When uh, Africa Union is yeah, six seven six. Can uh, your taxes? How many taxes? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. Senkaka, this is over age. Yeah, over age penalty. The total number my year, one hundred and fifty-four thousand seven hundred and seventy-three. Now it's one point five billion. In the average, in our financial BB, I'm not going to be there. Average for the new entry. They do it, you know. It is a same brand this year. You didn't talk about Kukrama. Cassidy, they were holding. What do you say? Messend the Mede Cassidy be flak Reban. Messend the video, Naman. Naman, man, who says he's a pong or two tree. Your office will be okay. Yeah, you could be a bosom or so. I know what I can know. No, 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 do it in a way near just seven seven thousand. A child and a boy at the night as they say two twenty three thousand plus. Can also your top wash it for the bar near Coco year near your comprehensive insurance near the amount. Now this can be up to us here now. What it is right? Welcome back to the show. If you just joined us, this is Good Morning Ghana live on Metro TV with me on this holiday edition regular Friday panel. Nana Kumia, MDSTC. Nana, good morning. Morning, Rani. And uh, also with me on the show, the son of man, member of parliament of the North Tongue Elevators, that's PVEs, you show of unlimited enjoyment of your mansions and homes. It's a simple to use self supported elevator for vertical movement of humans and goods at homes and offices. The original comes in three custom made models with wheelchair accessibility to choose from. You may call it luxury, but it's a necessary imperative for vertical mobility. Do not let aging or infirmity limit you. Get one for your easy vertical mobility at home or office. It's affordable and can be installed within three days with modification to your building. Visit lift and elevators, Ghana, Takumono for your solutions and free consultations. You can also reach them on 0200-535-515 or email at elevatorsgh at gmail.com. What does wealth mean to you? Do you want to live like a tycoon? Remember who's got a mola, got the power. Ghana's newest lottery game draws live on Adom TV at 9 a.m., 12 p.m. and 6 p.m. daily. Now pick up your phones, tablets, and computers and download the Game Park Games app on your Play Store. You can also play on the website at www.gameparkgames.com or by dialing star 946 hash on all networks. Just choose four numbers from zero to nine. It's easy to play and easy to win. Shall I make we play this game and make some mola? Nobody beats our odds in Ghana. Game Park Games, more mola, more power. This game is regulated by the National Lottery Authority, not for persons under 18. Play responsibly. And I know that you're looking forward to that master's degree or perhaps even the first uh, degree. Why don't you secure your future with Accra Business School? Boost your career with their prestigious MSc degrees from KNUST. You can pick from human resource management, communication, and international marketing, international relations, public affairs, or IT management. In just 12 months, the MBA can be yours. Dive into the BSc programs in IT security and cybercrime 
IT management and business management endorsed by top universities in Ireland and Wales. Uh, Accra Business School offers flexible entry payment and learning options convenient to you. It's time to unlock your potential and take position. Simply visit www.abs.edu.gh or call the Accra Business School on 0263-888-555 or 0263-888-666. Visit the campus at Spintex Road, Christ Square. Let Accra Business School elevate your future today. All right. So, son of man, we'll yes, start off with you. And um, let's start with the cathedral. You've told us um, on a few occasions that... Uh, you actually um, had uh, uh, got in the uh, speaker to, to, to admit uh, a request that you made. And yesterday, Parliament rose yesterday, right? Yes. This is your long back. Yes. So you're coming back when? Third week in October. In October. Okay. So we're told that uh, Parliament has set up a committee to probe the National Cathedral. Give, give us the details of that. <laughs> yes. Uh, good morning to all our distinguished viewers, and let me wish everybody a happy holiday. Mm. Yesterday, the House, by unanimous resolution, adopted the motion that we filed. Earlier, we had filed this motion requesting the Right Honorable Speaker to table it before the House, asking for a full-scale parliamentary inquiry under Order 191 of the Standing Orders of our Parliament. So that was the first stage. We were able to cross that hurdle. The Speaker thought there was prima facie basis and admitted the motion. So we had been waiting for, when the Speaker admits the motion, it would then be tabled, placed on the order paper, for the House to consider the uh, motion and the Speaker's approval of same. So the House yesterday adopted this motion. I moved the, the motion because it stood in my name and uh, six other colleagues. The Honorable Amma Kofibua seconded the motion and the House approved it by a unanimous position. There was no objection to it. Nobody stood up to resist the, the motion. So the speaker is now left with uh, the constitution of the, the committee. Our side was ready with the names. Uh, we had submitted four names to the right honorable speaker. How many? What was the, what was the membership? How many people? Uh, we are proposing either a seven member committee or an equal number. Um, uh, so, eight member uh, committee. But it will, the speaker will give the final ruling on that. The MPP side of the House said they need more time to do consultations and that the matters. Are quite complex, and it's not as Afenyo Makin said on the floor yesterday. It's not like selecting people to debate. This is a, a selection to go carry out an inquiry. So they need more time. Mm. Uh, if they had submitted their names, I'm sure that during this break, in the next few days, the committee could have started work. Uh, but because they have requested more time to do consultation, we will have to wait for their membership so that the committee will be duly constituted. But the most important hurdle has been cleared. Once the House has approved the motion in the unanimity which uh, <clears throat> attended upon the motion, it's a done deal. This uh, committee will certainly have to be set up unless somebody brings another motion asking for a rescission of the resolution of the House. And I don't see anybody doing that, especially when there was no, it wasn't a contentious issue. Nobody thought that there was no basis for this full-scale inquiry to take place. So 
We <clears throat> have crossed the most important hurdle. I will urge our colleagues on the MPP side to hurry with their consultation and present their names so that uh, the committee can start work. And you see, for those who may be thinking that, oh, you know, the harm has already been caused as we speak for more than 17 months, the project has stalled. Perhaps it has even died a natural death. So let's let sleeping dogs lie. I want to avert the minds of people who may be thinking that way to the fact that the contract which has been signed, a very, very terrible contract, all the experts who have looked at it, even though work is not going on, there are accruals. There is something in the contract called suspension claims. So as government has suspended work, every month, Ghana is paying $500,000. Uh? Yes. Every month, $500,000. So it's accruing. As we speak, the accruals alone has come to $52 million. How? Yes. And let me give you the breakdown of the $52 million. 5.2 or 52? 5 52. 52. 52. Don't forget $58 million has been spent already for that hole, yes. which is called the world's most expensive hole. Yes. As we speak, another $52 million has accrued. And let me give you the breakdown. Okay. Remember that the contractors, Ribadi, stopped work saying that government owes them, government is not paying them, and they have to mitigate costs. Yes. So in March 2022, they asked their workers to go home. What was certified at the time they were going home was $29 million, certified claims. That we haven't paid. That we haven't paid, $29 million. As of the $58 million, people shouldn't get confused. That has been paid already, out of which Ajayi alone took about $30 million, the most inflationary pricing anybody has come across anywhere in the world. So $29 million certified certificates are outstanding. Then interest, the interest claim that the contractors are claiming. Interest 30, on the 29 million. Yes, yes, because they are. That's also in the contract. Yes, that's also in the contract. $13 million. As at last week when I checked. Then the suspension claims I'm talking ah, about. You mean the 29 million yes. has attracted interest of 13 million? Yes, that's what the contractors How? are saying. That's what they are saying. That is, that is what they are saying. The documents that are. That's I've like about half, the, half yes. the amount. Yes. Then they are also saying that the suspension mm -hmm. of work so far, $10 million. The 500000 a month? Yes. Which presupposes that the suspension is about 20 months. Yes. So $10 million. That is why several months ago, we held a press conference and asked the president to abrogate this contract. Let's cut our losses. But too much pride, arrogance insensitivity, they will not listen. So here we are, and it's compounding. That is why this probe is so, so, so essential. Now, this $52 million is only what is outstanding for the contractors. You have the victims of the president's decision to demolish their properties. Their claims are also compounding. Remember that this has been the most reckless model adopted for any project. Look at all the green fields in Ghana, all the available land all over the place. The president decided by the vision he saw, whichever God he says he spoke to, that it should be cited at where you have all of these prime properties. So the scholarship secretariat was demolished. The passport office was demolished. The Malian ambassador's residence was demolished. Judges' bungalows demolished. In the process, an eminent appeal court judge resigned in protest. Then the Judicial Training Institute, of, I mean, one of the foremost judicial training institutes in the Commonwealth, demolished. As we speak, the, the, the former Chief Justice, I saw the document they have put together. They submitted that to the World Bank and uh, the ACOWAS Bank for Development and other places, looking for a loan of $50 million to build a new judicial training institute. Then you have the private owners, 
promises and then Waterstone reality. For Waterstone reality, they are in court. So a couple of days ago, when the lands minister came to parliament to answer a question and said that, oh, they have compensated everybody, I started receiving an avalanche of calls. That is not true. Waterstone reality said they are still in court. They have not been compensated. The Malian ambassador, they are still waiting for their residence. So they are surprised at what the, 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 the minister came to say in parliament. So you have all of these outstanding liabilities. The most reckless model ever. I mean, a country that already has an infrastructure deficit. A country that is struggling with finances. And then you decide that even if this should be a priority, one would have thought that you would have a discussion with the Ghanaian people of all the projects that you can execute. Do Ghanaians believe or think that a cathedral should be a priority? The president has said that this project is his priority of priorities. So number one, priority of priorities. This is a democracy. It's not an autocracy or some theocracy. You can't just impose your priority. Especially when that was not in your manifesto. And the Ghanaian people did not vote for you. For this, your secret priority of priorities. When you were making your so-called pledge to God, nobody was there with you. There's no evidence. A personal pledge. We all as Christians make personal pledges. When you make a personal pledge to God, you redeem it yourself. Alone. It's a personal pledge. It's an individual obligation. How did this metamorphose into a national project, a national commitment, a national liability? <laughs> it's incredible. Then don't forget that the president had told us that they would not use public funds only for me to intercept payments by Ken of Riata. Huge sums of money. Now we know about 339 million Ghana cities. At the time, the exchange rate worked out to $58 million. I mean, just think about what $58 million can do. Sunk into that hole with all the infl inflationary pricing. Then we are not yet talking about the operations in the United States of America, which had been hidden from the Ghanaian people offices that don't exist, then the chap called Kari Sames, who is keeping our $6 million. $6 million. Kari Sames is still keeping that money. So this probe is so crucial, and it will help us to retrieve all of these monies. Kari Sames must return our $6 million. All the others who are keeping our monies will be compelled to refund those monies. Then we can get to the bottom of all of this. Because now, I have estimated that this project is potentially the most expensive project Ghana has ever carried out. And really, when I say Ghana, it's because it's been imposed on Ghanaians. <laughs> we, we never asked the president to do this. It was his personal pledge. We've, we've had no debate in parliament about this matter. There's been no national consensus about this. So it's really President Akufuado's cathedral. But to the extent that he's using our taxes, it becomes our burden. Potentially, is the most expensive project ever, running into billions of dollars. Because already, a project which began at $100 million when the finance minister gave the first estimate, shot up to 200 to 350 to $400 million. Now we are told that steel alone, importing steel alone, they need $100 million. The last time I checked, they are working with about $800 million for just the construction, if it's to be completed. And remember that this cost does not include, if you read the contract, the copy of which I have here, it doesn't include the fittings, the artifacts. Because remember that for cathedrals, really, people go there not only for how iconic the exterior is, but what you have within. And Artifacts, depending on their originality, how those antiquities are credible and authentic, can be so, so expensive. 
So we haven't talked about that cost yet. So potentially, this is a billion dollar project if you add all of those who must be compensated. I mean, and, and it's, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, we, we're begging the IMF to give us $3 billion uh, that we need that to survive, to breathe, uh, to have a life in this economy. And about half of that will be going into this project if it is allowed <coughs> Let me ask a question. Continue. A few weeks ago, um, we're here discussing the Commission for Human Rights and Administrative Justice and the fact that um, they, they have um, asserted their, their jurisdiction over, over yeah. the issue. How does this pro play out? Won't we be having uh, simultaneous uh, or multiple investigation into the same issue? Yeah, brilliant question, brilliant question. So it's important to emphasize that Shiraj has been called upon by my petition to carry out a very narrow aspect of this whole kabudo, this whole conundrum. And that is conflict of interest. Remember that in the Supreme Court's case, Kujetua Blakwa or Manebuama versus Jacob Echebilamte, the Supreme Court said that for conflict of interest, the forum is Shraj. So the conflict of interest payment in that double identity matter relating to Victor Kusi Boatin, Kwabna Edujenfi, sitting on the board as Victor Kusi Boatin and making payments to Kwabna Edujenfi, director of JNS Talent Center Limited. It is that narrow matter of conflict of interest which Shraj is seized with and Shraj is supposed to focus on. So very, very narrow, very specific. But this parliamentary inquiry will be all encompassing we we'll leave out that conflict of interest matter which the Supreme Court has said the forum is not parliament, it's not the courts, it's not anywhere else, it is Shraj. So it was the right thing for us to do, to go to Shraj to deal with conflict of interest, which is just one aspect of a whole gamut of issues surrounding this that does not define such a project which you have planned, you have foreknowledge, you have put together a board of trustees, and it's a multiple-year rollout. It cannot be a contingency in the true sense of the word. Contingency is something that you don't envisage, you don't foresee, you did not have an idea of. Uh, it, it's, it's some kind of a happenstance. You cannot say the same about this project, which was well conceptualized at least in the quarters of the president when he had his vision and interaction with his God and, and, and set out to, 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 to roll it out, did demolitions and uh, put together teams and, and, and all of that. It cannot be a contingency project. So we'll look into those unconstitutional withdrawals, which we are convinced is a violation of Article 178 of the 1992 Constitution. And then all of the matters that have come about the lack of PPA approval. Remember that I did a right to information request to the Public Procurement Authority. And they came back that they have no knowledge about this project. They've been left out. There was no PPA approval. So we'll go into all of those procurement breaches as well. Um, the committee will certainly have to look at value for money, uh, the, all the inflationary pricing which, which has gone on. How is it that out of the $58 million released, David Ajay alone, uh, is keeping about $30 million. Where does this happen? Anywhere uh, in, in, in project implementation. We will seek to have a certain understanding about that. Then the roles of people. Remember that some of the resignation letters have given us quite an insight. Bishop Dakewood Mills' resignation letter was quite revealing about how it appears that there were certain elements outside of the board who were the real McCoys taking the decisions, that they didn't have a hand in the location, they didn't have a hand in the choice of the architect uh, and, and all of that. Then those who remain on the board, what has been their role, what, uh, uh, how do they justify all of the scandals that have attended upon this project. So it's going to be they a, more, for an a audit. more comprehensive. They asked for an audit, at least the religious leaders on the Yes, I recall. Board. What has happened uh, to them? I recall the uh, memo from... Uh, the Archbishop Duncan Williams and uh, Reverend Isud Anama, 
Reverend Isud Anaba demanding uh, a probe. The last time I checked, I think they had engaged, um, is it Deloitte, to, to commence that probe. But that is within uh, the ambit of the Secretariat and the Board of Trustees. Uh, we are going to uh, look at this matter in a more holistic, with a more broader perspective. And I think that what is even more important, really, elsewhere, when they set up these probes, these parliamentary inquiries are conducted, it is the recommendations, the lessons that will be learned, how it will even lead to governance reforms. Because we need to begin asking ourselves as a country, how did this happen? How is it possible for a president to just decide? I mean, this is a democracy. Uh, the president just decides that I am going to demolish all of these properties. Doesn't go through any parliamentary process, no approval processes. What are the accountability mechanisms? How is our system so deficient that it allows for this to happen? All of these demolitions, uh, the choice of an architect who starts work without PPA approval, and um, all of these payments without parliamentary approval. How, how does this happen in any functioning democracy? Then the inflationary pricing. You look at uh, the, the, the role of even the board of trustees, how they were put together. Remember that the Catholic Church issued a statement that they were not consulted to send a rep from the Catholic Church, and yet like people were handpicked as if they represent you know, those, those denominations. So, so th th there's, there's, there's a lot of abuse of, 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 of office, and we need to learn lessons so that moving forward, how do we clip the wings of any future president who may want to? I, I concede that none of our presidents in history has ever taken us on this path. I mean, when presidents are boasting of um, Akosombo Dam, boasting of um, Ghana Gas, President Mills, President Mahama, you know, others are boasting of harbors, of e blocks, of universities. This is the legacy of President Akufuado, the world's most expensive hole. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's important that the committee comes up with far-reaching recommendations that will help us to tighten our governance architecture to prevent this from happening in, in the future. That is why uh, many Ghanaians are really excited that uh, we are going to have a forum. Because so far, it's just been, you know, serialization, putting out, and it's been the most scandal-plagued project. Every day, there's something new. There's a new scandal if it's not double identity, if it's not conflict of interest, if it's not inflationary pricing, if it's not, you know, demolished property owners crying and going to court and all that. It's, it's just been a mess. So this is going to create a one-stop forum to deal with all of these matters mm -hmm. and, uh, and hopefully identify those who have brought us where we are. Uh, if sanctions must apply, let the acts fall where it may mm. and uh, let lessons be learned moving forward. Mm. Uh, <laughs> you do know, you miss Sami, Parliament? Sami Okujato is just running riots. Mm. Um, well, in the first instance, I am happy that... I asked the question. Parliament. Do you miss Parliament? I haven't decided. I haven't taken a decision on the matter. Okay. Yeah. But some, uh, in the first instance, I am happy that there is a unanimous decision by the Parliament of Ghana to investigate this cathedral matter. So both sides of the house are committed to it. I'm very, very happy about that. There have been a lot of claims, a lot of counterclaims, accusations, counter-accusations, um, parties with interest in this matter have been talking at each other in the media. And a probe, bipartisan probe of this kind to be set up in Parliament. 
will then give us the forum for all the issues to be brought to a center and proper scrutiny attended, applied to them. So we would know the truth. And if there have been wrongdoing, what do we do to the wrongdoers? If there are lessons to be learned, we would then learn those lessons and move forward and ensure that um, whatever mistakes they may be are not repeated. So I am very, very happy that there is going to be an investigation by a proper forum like Parliament, which has oversight over the use of public monies. So it's in the right forum, and I'm happy about it. I said Samuel Kujeto is running riot because uh, now that there's going to be a forum, all these issues, accusations and counter accusation, should be properly brought before the committee. And I, I, I hold a strong suspicion that Samuel Kujeto will be part of that committee proposed by his side. So all these issues that you've canvassed for the last, I don't know how many months, which you are entitled to, there's a forum now. Um, so to go ahead and say that this is the most scandal-plagued uh, event, the most reckless event, uh, really, I, I don't think it's necessary at this point because now you have the forum to go and put all of this put up all, show the reckless spending, show the uh, uh, bad decision making, show the non-accountability, show all of that and have it discussed. Um, this table is not the table that we are now going to see whether this is the most scandalous, uh, uh, scandal plagued, the most reckless and, and all of that. <laughs> now that we have the forum, let's all take our matters to that forum. I would be happy if there's a live telecast so that all of us can follow minute by minute how it's going to play out. We are all interested that there's accountability, which means the proper spending of taxpayers' monies. All of us are interested, and if there have been uh, improper spending, whatever, all of us are interested that they are exposed. So, uh, take it easy, huh? take it easy, you spend the last one hour um, repeating the accusations, now that the forum is there, take it there, repeat them. The other people who have to answer to it, they will also be there, so that at the end of the day we'll get the, we'll get the benefits of it. I, that, so I don't want to take you on, on the issues that you raised because I've said it's not a forum, so mm -hmm. I'm not going to follow you into, into that. But I'm very happy that there is a forum. And those of you who uh, led Parliament to it, it's a good thing that you've done. I don't want to bring the other issues that you could have led Parliament to. You said you probe, but that's okay. Like it's a holiday. Uh, like which ones? But the later time I say it, you become the uh, resignation. <laughs> 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 so because it's a holiday, let's leave. But let's all, let a poem happen. I'm, I'm, you said that my people haven't brought their yes, people. Yes, they, they, so should, they should hurry up. Hurry, hurry. Yeah. No, no, no. Once, once they've agreed, um, certainly they would. And this is one investigation that all of us will follow. My, my parliamentary, by your standing orders, are parliamentary committees always composed of MPs and always chaired by MPs? If it's a parliamentary committee, yeah. it has to be composed of MPs. But Only. of course they can, yeah. But of course they can call on outside expertise. Yeah, not, they, not as members, as, but yes, but okay, to assist the uh, to assist the committee. Okay. If there are any technical issues, they can always call. Yeah, you can always and then, call experts. And, and yeah. the parliamentary committee yeah. can actually subpoena. Uh, it has the powers come. of the high court. Yeah. Who so, are the members from your side? Well, once the speaker has been announced, I don't know if it will okay, be appropriate. Okay. I don't want to take the wind Let out me of not the sails. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, I don't want to incur the speaker's wrath. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The last ah. time I saw him was dressed uh, 
I saw one but this, the, the Fulani kings. Yeah, yeah, he received right. a special award. You are not asking him yes. the members of the committee, which the speaker has to announce. You are asking him their, their nominations. Side, yeah, no. Yes, mm -hmm. you, your nominations. Yeah, but it's so the same your thing. Oh, no, it's not. The speaker will announce. No, your nominations nomination. may not be the membership of the Have committee. you submitted? Yes. yes. You have yes. officially yes. submitted. Yes, so, officially submitted. So you can say that this is what we have submitted. Myself, so 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 so. I mean, that one too. The, the way so does is cagey about some stuff. No, that no, no, it's just no, it's just out of respect. Yeah, yeah. No, respect the, for the protocol. List, the I list are part of the KGB files. I am saying. No, 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 no. I am saying. <laughs> Randy, the question you ask is not the authority of the to speaker. give us the membership of the committee, which is the speaker's prerogative. You are saying that their side, who have they selected? Huh? That's the question. It and you know it. The, yeah, but it's, it's, for not the, it's for this. It's not, it's, it's, it's not asking you. This, this are matters for the speaker or leadership if they so wish to put out. I, I don't want the to be, is be presumptuous. Not, listen, the question is not who are the members. So for those the of you, is those for those of you, who, for those of you who huh? who do not know <laughs> or may not know or never watch them. Elena Kumia was once the host of Talking Points. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was then true. GBC TV. <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> and, and, so. And, and surprisingly, at that time, he didn't bring all of these skills to bear. You so. know? He, he was such a gentle, polite yeah, host. I was, you know? I was the, yeah. the very shining light when I was hosting it. Um, and you took inspiration from her. <laughs> but, but, but without all of this heckling. So, no, and, not, and, I'm just trying to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Nana Korea. We'll be back soon. <laughs> <laughs>
and entry is absolutely free. Sometimes the unexpected happens and the hero falls down in his own story. But he needs not stay down for long. Cosmopolitan Health Insurance is your trusted health partner. Whether an individual building a business with Cosmopolitan Health Insurance, your medical care is our concern. For the best health insurance solutions for corporate institutions, groups and associations, families and individuals, choose Cosmopolitan Health Insurance from our over 700 accredited health service providers nationwide. Call us on 0302-540-668 or 0501-678-547 for all your health insurance solutions. Cosmopolitan Health Insurance, your medical care is our concern. Step into success with Accra Business School. Boost your career with a prestigious MSc degrees from KNUST. Pick from Human Resource Management, Communication and International Relations, Public Affairs. In just 12 months, our MBA can be yours. Dive into our BSc programs in IT Security and Cybercrime, IT Management and Business and Management, endorsed by top universities in Ireland and Wales. We offer flexible entry, payment and learning options. It's time to unlock your potential and take flight. Visit www.abs.edu.gh or dial 0263-888-555. Let Accra Business School elevate your future today. For over 20 years of serving the world with herbal and alternative medicine, we've been successful in treating complicated medical conditions with a perfect combination of herbal and alternative methods of treatment, like homeopathy, naturopathy, reflexology, and many more. We deliver excellent and effective service to people from all walks of life through scientific and traditional means. We have a well-equipped laboratory with advanced diagnostic and treatment devices to help detect your illness so we know the right medication to be given at Amen Scientific Herbal and Alternative Medical Hospital. We are proud manufacturers of our own herbal medication. Our zeal and passion to save lives with our patients at heart and outstanding achievements since 1996 has won us several awards. That is why we say, Go Herbal, Go Amen. We are located everywhere in all the regions. Amen Scientific Herbal and Alternative Medical Hospital. Allahu Shafi. God is the healer. Right, welcome back to the show. If you just joined us, this is Good Morning Ghana Live on Metro TV. Still with me on the show, Nana Kumia and uh, Savio Kujato and Blackwa. I keep making this promise to you as a one day, one day. I'm sure that when I'm, I'm uh, saying my goodbyes, uh, I'll, I'll show you uh, what happens uh, off air. Here are some of those conversations. And, we hope that Ghana will stay intact after <laughs> <laughs> after, after <laughs> that exposé. <laughs> anyway, oh. well, <laughs> but so the, Randy Abbey, the way you are saying it, somebody would think we are saying something that you know. I'm not could, talking could about in, just near to the security of the states. Uh, We're just talking about the NDC running mates and some of the names that are coming. That's all. Just that. Ah, just um, that. What? <laughs> <laughs> and more. <clears throat> It's the biggest electronics <laughs> blessing attack promo. Rush, the biggest electronics company limited for up to 67% discount on selected appliances such as um, Samsung, LG, Moved, Nasco, TCL, Media, and Toshiba. Uh, the Makers electronics company limited has a quality but affordable electronic appliances with two years manufacturer defect warranty. So visit the showrooms at the Taifa Burkina Highway, Amasaman Zungu Junction, Oh yeah, if I tell my Boga Junction, Kaswa New Market, Ashaman Valko Flat, Kumasi Ahinima Kokobing, 
Dark Radio for your command number nine markets. You can reach the Makers Electronics Company Limited on 055 or 055 The Makers Electronics Company Limited, large and in charge with quality but affordable home appliances and consumer electronics. Terms and conditions apply. And they say it's not by mouth, it's by play. Don't be blue, wear your crown of glory, and come slug it out as citizens at the IMG League Cup F Club Fan Base Tournament. And it's happening tomorrow at the Adjurian AstroTef. That's the Ignite Media Group League Cup. And so whether you are an Arsenal fan, a Liverpool fan, a Man U fan, a Juventus fan, a Real Madrid fan, a Barcelona fan, a Bayern Munich fan, a PSG fan, um, it's happening tomorrow morning. And the IMG League Cup is made for you. This is to set the tone for the new Euro League season. So come join us tomorrow, the 5th of August, at Adjuring and Astro Tef Park for the best of goals and bragging rights. Remember, it's on tomorrow and you don't have to miss it. This is sponsored by Game Park Games. Simply dial star 946 hash on all networks. Right. Nana? Mm. What have you been up to? There are two things that a son of mine has been <laughs> up to. We've dealt with one. What have you been up to? I'm waiting for the second one. Yes. Oh, um, In impatiently. I got back yesterday. Mm. From? From the campaign trail mm -hmm. um, with Dr. Baumia mm -hmm. and the team. We just finished Central Region. Mm. Um, yesterday we did um, Gomua Central. Mr. Uh, Pomazi, and um, we did um, three others. Mm. Went very well, um, and if the reaction of the delegates is to be borne out, Dr. Baumia would win by a huge margin, mm. at least for the, uh, the, the, the main election. I don't know about the super delegates, but for the Delegates election, the, the 220,000 20, delegates, it will sweep a massive, by a massive margin. So we got back yesterday in the night, completing the Central Regional Tour, every constituency. And we'll be starting Eastern Region, maybe on Monday. Mm. We'll do all the constituencies. Mm. It's tiring. It's odious uh, roadshow because he, he does four constituencies a day. Mm. And he speaks for a, a, a minimum of an hour in each constituency. What is he telling them? What does he tell them? <laughs> um, he, he, he tells delegates about his uh, contributions to the party from 2001 when President Kufu. Uh, came into office, and um, he there was a new governor, Mr. Aqua, and he was Mr. Aqua's uh, special assistant. But through the work that that he was that he did for Aqua, he became chairman of uh, the committee here and Kutuose, um, of uh, who's passed unfortunately. But he became chairman of Kutuose. He was a minister of state at the Ministry Ministry of uh, Finance. Chairman of the Economic Coordinating Committee for HIPIC. And he was also part of the technical team that laid the, the, the research and the parameters for us going to HIPIC. And um, he caught President Kufour's eye. And so in 2006, President Kufour appointed him the Deputy Governor and uh, took part in the redenomination. But all of this is working for the government until 2008 when um, But if he was at the Bank of Ghana before President Kufour became president? Yes, he was at the Bank of Ghana. He had come from uh, his studies, his PhD, in to, and joined the Bank of Ghana in the year 2000. Mm -hmm. And so when Aqua came in 2001, um, Aqua was happy with his work and Aqua retained him. And then he went on to, be, to chair some of these uh, hippie mm. committees and so on. And then, um, so he talks about all of that and then his contributions to the party as running mates. 
And then he talks about his vision for the party itself, because these are delegates. And um, what really strikes delegates, because every time he talks about it, they are cited, is that he believes he will give the NPP a more inclusive brand. And he would also um, give the NPP a fighting chance in the NDC strongholds, particularly in the northern region and in the Zogo communities. And um, delegates really warm up to, to, to that. So, in a nutshell, that's what presents himself, talks about his life struggles. Apparently, there were 17 children. So, he says that he hasn't had an easy life. Mm -hmm. His father was a prominent uh, politician before independence and post-independence. But there were 17 different mothers. So, um, it was quite a struggle. He had to drive taxis. He had to do cleaning jobs. In Ghana? No, abroad. That's what that is normal. Yes. That's normal. It's not yes, normal. it's normal. But you wouldn't think he's done those things. He went to Abroche after six form. Yes. Ah. Yes. He went to, to, to go to... Um, but this man hasn't done cleaning uni. jobs before. Huh? This man hasn't done cleaning jobs in Ghana. Who told you that? During the uh, <laughs> our days in Legon, during the break, we... we we, we travel for what is called any work, just oh, to holiday. make a few. Yeah, yeah. and every, I remember work, working in every the laundry. Po every politician yeah. says he was once a hustler. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 I, would, I would travel but to the, the I would travel to the states but, and work yes. in the laundry. Okay. It, it all, somebody, like me, somebody like me, somebody like me. So my father, well, well, my father really, by many standards, was not exactly um, a wealthy man. But where we were living in Adabraka, which is supposed to be um, some of the depressed areas in Accra. He stood out. Yeah. You know, so the people there that I grew up with, they always saw me uh, as a, as a privilege. But my father did something. Because of his background, uh, doing the peasant agriculture in those days, every holiday, they would make sure we went to the village to spend the holidays. And mm -hmm. once you're in the village, you would accompany your grandmother to the farm. Mm. And of course, they will buy you a lot of stuff, footballs mm. and all of that to make you, to, to, to induce you to go to the village. Mm. If you stay in Accra, you won't get your football and some of those things. If you, go, if you agreed, he will buy those things for you. But once you are there, you will drink from the stream. From the stream. Mm. Uh, you will go to the farm. You I, miss the, I miss the taste of the, the water in the and the, the ethane weapon. Yes, yeah. yes. You the go taste, to the farm. The taste, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they put uh, something in it. That's yeah. So when I tell people that, oh, but I used to carry firewood and baskets of plantain, and I go, oh, but you live in Adabaka throughout your life. So Bamiya talks about that. He's been through all of that. And um, <laughs> he talks about the fact that he's the most experienced politically, having served as running mate. For 16, getting on to 16 years, and also having served as vice president, getting on to eight years. But what the delegates really warm up to, that he says that, and this is verifiable, that he is in the best position to enable the NPP break the eight, mm. because he will be a threat to them, apart from giving the party a, a more inclusive branding. Mm. He would be a threat in the north mm. and in the Zongos, which mm. are NDC strongholds. Mm. And if he's able to reach out to get a lot of these NDC votes to add to the traditional votes, uh, we're more likely to break the end. So really, that, that's, that's the message. That is a lot of hard work. Mm. By the nature of the campaign, um, do the delegates get opportunity uh, to ask questions? Or well, it's more of like an address? No, okay. it's more of an address. Okay. But it, it's, it's more of a, um, how do I, like a triumphal, a, a triumphant, the delegates, when you see the mood, they mm. see it, they're in a carnival mood. Okay. So you go there and you see, you should see some of the footage. Mm. And um, they are, it's just euphoric. Mm. So... 
I don't know the how. The early part, the... you were taking selfies. Who the early part, selfies? when you joined the campaign, I think it was Ashanti region or something. Okay. You were so excited. You were taking yeah, because, uh, because, selfies. Because, uh, you know, about seven of these gentlemen are Ashantis. Mm. So I didn't expect that he was going to have that euphoric reaction from mm. the delegates in Ashanti. Mm. Because seven of the of the of the contestants are Ashanti. So I was really taken aback mm. by the uh, reaction of the delegates in Ashanti. Mm. And chairman, constituency chairman after chairman, even when you try to restrain them, that you, as a chairman you shouldn't they just say, look, I can help it. And they keep declaring. I mean it's 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 incredible. Okay. Now now um there was, there was something that I, I wanted to ask you. I mean, okay, since they don't, they, don't, they don't get to ask questions. Now, is it the same strategy for both elections? You have, you have um, two different uh, electoral colleges. Yeah. So you're going to have two elections. That's mm -hmm. what you have to, and then you, you, you made a point that this is really for the main election because you're meeting virtually everybody. Mm. That's why I ask, is it the same strategy? You are deploying a different strategy for the super delegates, which well, is more of, more of the, a private... The super community. delegates, yes. The super delegates are just about 900. Mm. And um, the, the main election are over 200,000. So the super delegates is more caucus, getting um, 20 people in a room and speaking to them. The, 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 the themes are the same. Um, because you, you want to tell delegates that if they selected you, you are more likely to give power or to retain power for the NPP. So the message will be about the same. Slanted a little, depending on the audience, which is normal. I mean, mm -hmm. You can't have the same uh, for, the, for different audience. But mm -hmm. the core message is who, what do you bring to the table as far as retaining power for the, for the, for the, for the MPP? Somebody who's a um, constituency chairman may have a slightly different expectation from somebody who's a polling station chairman and so on. And they, they belong to the different electoral colleges, the chairman are they do the general one, but they also do the super delegates. But what unites them is who can retain power mm. for the NPP. So the message is, is the same with slight variations. Mm. Now, now, so obviously, speaking about his strengths, mm. which is obviously something that he needs to focus on, but um, for, for the larger um, um, group and even in your party, and even with some of the people who are contesting him, uh, there are also issues about the performance of the economy. The things that he said, and interestingly, he, he has uh, spoken more than perhaps any of the uh, contestants. So all the things that he said about the economy, his critique of the previous government, the things he has said in government, and the performance of the economy today. Obviously, that also will be a downside for him. Yes. Are you considering that as well? No, well, he, he, it's, he, in the messaging, he addresses that. Oh, he does? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, just yesterday when we were at um, Pomazi, I mean, there have also been successes of the government. Mm -hmm. uh, and so he touts those successes. Mm -hmm. Free SHS, there are difficulties like anything, but it's a monumental achievement. Um, the one district, one factory, you need to go in forward, reshape it to be a bit more focused and all of that. He talks about all of that. He talks about a digitalization agenda that he's played a major role. So he touts the achievements of the government and he talks about the economy that the first three years, 2017 to 2019, uh, the macro environment, and really what we're talking about is the macro, macro, macro economy. The macro environment was relatively stable. Uh, growth rates were impressive. Ghana was touted 
as they're having the highest average growth rate in the whole world. And then he talks about what we're going through today, that is turbulence um, that have also been influenced by the external factors that all of us agree to, and that the government is working to get us out of that turbulence, and that he's sure in another couple of months we will be able to get out of the turbulence. But this larger issue, which, uh, like you said, that people, would, his openness would throw at him. They would try and pin the current turbulence that we are going through on him. They would say, ah, but you talked about macro stability. And you talked about, I mean, you are supposed to be the chairman of the economic management team. But you see, the economic management team, like any team, how do you, even if there have been difficulties or failures, I don't know how you can pin uh, whatever omissions there have been or failures there have been on one person. Because it's <coughs> As a, the head. It's the, yes, but it's a team. I mean, if, if you are, you, let me use football because you are mm. an astute football. Uh, um, I mean, the team. So there's a captain of 11 players. He's the captain. And they lose a match. Mm. And then you blame the captain. The coach takes responsibility. Yes. But he's not a coach. Is the captain. Mm. So it's a team. Um, but he, 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 he's taking the praise in the past. Yeah. We've seen videos of him taking the praise in the past. And we've seen videos of he himself. No, he touts the successes in the past. Yes. He doesn't take responsibility. No, I said two things. I said this, we've, I've said two things. I've mm. said we've seen tapes in the past yeah. where he's eulogized by, by success. Yeah. At least there's one uh, uh, honorable Yao of Okay, okay. okay. Uh -huh. And then you have the one that he speaks about, the yeah. team. He lists all of them. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, but if people decide to eulogize the captain mm -hmm. of the team because the team has won a match, the captain mm -hmm. is not going to come out and say, normally if you ask him, you say his team work. Okay. But it doesn't stop other people from eulogizing. I mean, when um, somebody... Uh, a bit, is it like, who's the captain now? Are you? Currently. Yeah. Dede. Yes. Dede. The Black Stars are winning. Mm. Unless, of course, Dede's, the captain's performance, he missed some clear chances or he missed a penalty. Otherwise, uh, if they win a match, people mm. will say it's under the captainship of... Uh, but I'm sure if you spoke to Dede, he will, uh, you attribute it to the team. All right. Yeah. Okay. So, mm. when we, but when we come to... If by uh, God's grace the delegates endorse him, and he mm -hmm. becomes the flag bearer. Mm -hmm. uh, he's going to present a new manifesto. Mm -hmm. He's going to present a new vision. Of course, these attacks will come, that you are uh, you're supposed to be the economic messiah, mm -hmm. so you can't escape blame. I mean, President Mahama is, is back. The mm -hmm. NDC have brought him back mm -hmm. because... The, 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 by bringing him back, they believe that the, you can't blame him for the performance of the NDC that led to their uh, 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 removal from office and so on. Now, if as president, President Mahama still gets endorsement, despite the results that we've seen, and as president, how much more can you blame a vice president? Mm -hmm. So we are looking forward. We just want him to be endorsed first, and then we'll All deal right. with the bigger battle. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. There's, there's a last one I was going to raise with you, uh, still on the on the positives, on the advantages, what he thinks it brings on the table. Yeah. There's also the vexed issue of religion. That is a Muslim. Yeah. This is a predominantly Christian country, um, and he is a Muslim. Um, is that also something that you're considering? It could be a factor mm -hmm. uh, that people would have, would factor in the religion mm -hmm. in their decisions to vote. We don't have a, a, any doubt about it at all. Mm -hmm. And um, he would have to show or reassure people, particularly Christians, who may have some reservations mm -hmm. about a Muslim 
president. It has to be part of his general campaign to factor in assurances mm -hmm. to, to those people. But, it, but it, yeah. you see, the, the world is moving. I mean, if you take the United Kingdom, for example, mm -hmm. United Kingdom. Yes. I mean, this is, uh, today we have a, a prime minister who, one, is not, is not white, and two, and the United Kingdom actually has ha have a, a national religion, mm -hmm. which is the Anglican, uh, sorry, a national faith, mm -hmm. which is the Anglican faith. Mm -hmm. So, but they have a prime minister today who is not white, mm -hmm. is Indian, and two, is Hindi. Mm -hmm. You know, but he's the prime minister. Uh, if, if you went to uh, Scotland, mm -hmm. which is even more conservative than England, because mm -hmm. you know, Scotland is less uh, metropolitan than, than England, where there's a lot of migrants and so on. Even today, Scotland, the chief minister there is Bangladeshi. Mm -hmm. and, of of and, Bangladeshi descent. Well, yeah. uh, you can play with it. No, it's of it's Bangladeshi descent. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I don't have yeah, a problem. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you like this, you are, you are, you are Randy Abbey of Anomabu descent or something. Me? Yeah. No. Where? Where's your descent? Accra, from here. Your mother is from where? Cape Coast. Yes. So you are Randy Abbey, uh, you know, a guy of uh, <laughs> <laughs> fancy descent. <laughs> so it's all fine. I don't have a, right. I don't right. have a problem. Right. But right. Um, even when you come to Ghana, there are quite a few constituencies. Mm with large Christian majorities mm -hmm. where the members of the, lead, the political leaders they have chosen are not Christians. Mm -hmm. Your good friend, the la I hear the last time you and he were having a, some chat on the media, KT yeah. Hammond, for example, of uh, Adansi. Uh, KT Hammond is Amadi, mm -hmm. but he's been there, and, and that Adansi constituency, mm -hmm. It's a, it's a largely Christian constituency. But they've had a... Then there's also a, this chap, forgotten his name. He was one of the Ashanti constituencies. He's also not Christian, but he's been... Um, and then you have places here in Accra with large Muslim uh, 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 communities, like Ayawaso, uh, where you are Christians and so on. Uh, if you took um, Ayawaso, the first MP, I see Kwe, but the current one, who's also mm -hmm. the regional minister, is Christian. So it's a factor that has to be recognized, mm -hmm. and it's a factor that has to be dealt with by reassurance. And I'm sure right. at the right time, yeah, okay. it will be done. Sami? Hi, Doc. Do we move on to, to, to the second issue? Yes, yes, we should. All right. We, we should. should. The um, the bombshell yeah, the promise. Promise. Ah, yes. yes, yeah, the kitchen scandal. Yes, yes, yes. So, true to your word, at five a.m., uh, you you okay. So so um, your friend uh, Frank Edu Kavank. Ah, okay, so the Scottish guy is Pakistani. Oh, and I said Bangl Bangladesh. Yes. Well, there used to be one country. <laughs> 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 yes, 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 yes. Let me tell you something about Efe Du. Uh -huh. You play senior. golf with him? No, he was my senior. He plays golf as well? Yeah. yeah. But he was my uh, senior at, at school, yes. university. Mm. And um, he played polo. Yes. And then he played, uh, I think, cricket. Yeah. And because these were not popular sports, oh, yeah. If you are playing at the university, invariably you play in the national team. Yeah. Because these are, it's not like football or basketball where mm. there's mass participation. So he was in one of those teams, cricket, but, and then automatically he was part of the national team. And there were some introductions being made. Those, um, and then he got up and said, FA do of Ghana. Mm -hmm. And everybody was like, of Ghana. <laughs> the cricket, the national team. And so that became his name. Uh, but, um, Every do of Ghana, okay. <laughs> you know, very is now, um, very very is now F F a do of Carbank. 
I can't you mention know, his name without Calvin. He's he's established mm. his uh, his brand on that bank, mm. and um, he did a wonderful job. I think he went into that bank right from school. Oh, yeah, right after school, he went into that bank, and then um, rose to become the head. And he's been so identified with the bank, and and you don't have many individuals being so identified with an institution actually put their brand in. Just a few, mm. and, and, and Frank Edu is one of them. Mm. Mm. All right, now, Sammy, let's get on to your, your issue. So, um, you have. If, if, do yes. I have 30 seconds? Please just do, to, please yeah, do. Yeah, please just do. before you, please you come do, please in, do, I mean, please as, as, as Nana Komia went mm. on and on about how they crisscross the country mm. uh, campaigning for Baumia, certainly we wish. Wish them well. Mm. He knows I personally wish him Godspeed and safe journey. Mm. Uh, but it just occurred to me that perhaps it's time to begin this discussion. And it's not limited to only MPP campaign. But moving forward, we need to have a national policy on campaigning as an incumbent. Doc, you know that in the developed countries, in, the, in other jurisdictions, mm. when you are incumbent and you are campaigning, using public time, public resources, your campaign reembases the state. In the United States of America, for example, if you are a sitting president or a sitting vice president, and you are campaigning, it's time to select the next leader. Your campaign picks up the tap. It is not placed on the taxpayer. We don't seem to do that here. And here you have the sitting vice president using a lot of public resources. It's all our fuel. And you know how expensive these are and all of those things. And it's the campaign's duty to pay back. So you must raise funds separately out of government. And it's the campaign that will reimburse. For they understand that for some of the items, the state can't take it away from you, your, the, the jets, the vehicles. Um, but you will pay for the use of that. We don't, we, don't, we don't have that policy in Ghana. And I just thought that I raised that matter. So they're moving forward. And, and it should cut across. So whether it's the NDC in power, or the MPP in power. I mean, as we begin to pay close attention to areas that we can cut costs, we can, where we can protect the public best. Because campaigns are very expensive. And if we just, no policy, blank check, and incumbents can just, you know, uh, ramp up all of these bills and impose them on the, on the, and the poor, struggling taxpayer under, you know, a bankrupt economy, I think that is really unconscionable and it's problematic. So that's the only point I wanted to make. The, uh, the, on, the, on this the, vice president's one, one, campaign one talks. Um, it's an interesting point, and I agree totally. Um, the last time we were talking here about public funding for political parties, I was mm. dead set mm. against it. Mm. Dead set against it. It's all in line with the cost of democracy. That Fine, democracy is expensive, but we're a poor country, mm -hmm. and we can't throw all our resources into political administration. So um, I am a, uh, working at a state institution. If, if I follow Baumia, I'll go around with him on public time, it will be a problem. So I've taken leave. I've taken some leave from work. So I'm, I'm following him on my own And you don't use your official car? Now, the, the, the bit about the official stuff, Baumia should be praised because he's setting a trend which I'll be happy if that trend leads into the kind of discussion that um, you, are, you are saying, I support it. Because Baumia is conscious of it. You know, Baumia has rented a bus. So all of us sit in the bus, a 31 seat. From Accra? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All of us. Yesterday, yesterday, we came by bus. Mm -hmm. All the travels who go by bus. The bus, uh, white, nice bus is sitting in front of his house as we speak. Mm. 
And for, this is the first time I've seen a, a, somebody with that kind of incumbency renting his own bus. Of course, the police outriders and security is present because he's also the vice president of Ghana. But the, the main transportation for all of us, and there are about 20 of us in the team, and the hotels that we sleep in are all uh, born by himself. But the main mode of transportation... By him? Yeah. The, the main mode of transportation is um, a bus that is rented. And I'm, I'm hoping that. And, and you see, a lot of the costs, there's actually a scramble for people to take up those costs. When we went to Ashanti, not so much in the central region and in the western region, but invariably, some of the hotels we, we slept in would throw in a dinner and so on. But in Ashanti, you had to restrain, because every evening somebody wanted to host a dinner, whether a member of parliament or something. The way I empower is like that. Yes. So you, you had to restrain, but there's a long list mm. of people falling over themselves to sponsor dinner, to all of that. But the point is that we must establish the rules. I mean, yeah. now and there are no national rules. National policy, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, now there are no rules. Okay. And um, it's, it's, it needs to be structured. Yes, yeah. it needs to okay. be structured. <clears throat> all right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so let me dive in into the... And this the, morning, I've seen a response from Gabi Asarachidako. Yes, yes, I've, I've read his response. And okay. uh, I'm glad that the response confirms... Uh, what I put out, so that um, people don't think that I've just been conjecturing. Or it doesn't confirm your conclusions. Yes, uh, so I'll come to I'll come to those conclusions um, in a, in a jiffy. Mm. Let me first of all begin by celebrating all the whistleblowers, technocrats, sometimes a few politicians who help us with our oversight. The work we do, it cannot be possible without whistleblowers, without people who are in the bowel of the belly, who are neck deep, who have the benefit of documents, of meetings, of information, of models of Randy, who bring that to our attention as members of parliament seeking pursue the national interest. So I want to state on the record very emphatically that I do not deserve any praise whatsoever. The praise really, the celebration goes to all of these whistleblowers. So and, as, and, a, as a leader of and, the team, you are, and you I'm, are giving I'm, credit I'm, to I'm, the team. I'm only a, a conduit, if you like. Now, as a member of parliament, when these whistleblowers come to you, you have only three options. Only three options. One, either to ignore and let your country bleed, let your country suffer. Or two, to receive the information and go and do business with it or trade with it and make personal gains or receive personal favors, which really will be unpatriotic. That's the second option. The third option is for you to take it up, blow the alarm, pursue the national interest, and protect your country. And I am glad that I always choose the third option, not those two possibilities that I mentioned earlier. So, What's the kitchen scandal about? The kitchen scandal is valued at a whopping 187.3 million Ghana cities. The tons of documents I have received and reviewed reveal a grand scheme that if we had not blown the alarm will cost the Ghanaian taxpayer at least a minimum 187.3 million Ghana cities. 
I say minimum because if you look at Gabi's letters, he insists that this 187.3 million is without interest. He states that in all his letters. So if you add interest, which he was demanding that they sit and calculate, would have far exceeded probably 200, 300 million Ghana cities. So this is no chicken feed. Mm? 187.3 million Ghana cities is more than all the allocation to the tourism ministry, for example. More than all the allocation to the Ministry of Information, Ministry of Parliamentary Affairs, Ministry of Chieftains, so many ministries and so many institutions, Shraj, NCC, OSP. So we are talking about a colossal sum of money which was on the verge of being paid until we blew the alarm. Now, it is also important to recognize that this payment arises out of a contract to West Blue, which was awarded on the 4th of August 2015, and interestingly, awarded exactly on this day, eight years ago, under President Mahama exactly to the day, 4th August 2015, known as the National Single Window and Integrated Risk Management <laughs> System. I have the contract marking who led the charge from the MPP MPs caucus. Government aid in signing West Blue deal, this is CTFM, August 12, 2015. West Blue case, Afenyo marking heads to the Supreme Court, 2nd September 2015. MP to battle West Blue over Mahama contracts. This is Ghana Web, July 10, 2015. Minority threatens presidency over the West Blue contract. Modern Ghana. And this is also dated the 11th of September 2015. Government aid in signing West Blue Deal. Then you have the Director of Communications of the NPP at the time, who gladly is here with us, the Honorable Nana Akomia. He also issued this statement, which is still available on CTFM Online, May 16, 2016, under the caption, Mahama lied about fighting corruption, NPP. And Nana Komiya wrote, let me quote verbatim, President Mahama told a blatant lie when he said in London that he does not put himself in a position to be bribed as he does not involve himself and his office in public procurement. As fate will have it, on 12 May 2015, exactly a year ago, to the day he granted a BBC interview, the president, through a letter signed by his chief of staff, Julius Debra, personally and directly in, 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 instructed the Minister of Finance to formally engage West Blue Ghana Limited without any competitive tender. This was the contract for the implementation of the national single window for the inspection of goods at the ports. This contract is estimated to be worth more than $300 million over the next five years. By directing his Minister of Finance to give the contract to a particular company, the president, by his own logic, had put himself in a position to be offered and receive bribes. This is Nana Komiya. Then I have the tweet from Gabi Asari Ochidako. Many tweets, and, and I, I must commend Ghanaians on social media who have been digging up. There's a, there's a gentleman called the receipt guy. I don't know who, who he is. I don't have his serial number. He uses the receipt guy on, 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 on X. <laughs> Twitter is now X. He is doing a great job uh, digging up all of these Gabi Ochidaku tweets. And very interesting tweets. He, he says that uh, this 23rd May, 20, he said, West Blue creates problem at Temaports. Mahama stands accused. What caused the sacking of the Commissioner of Customs Department? Has he been replaced by the President's buddy, John Vianney? It's all about West Blue. Then Gabi, another day, another tweet. Is Valentina Sou Minta West Blue brought in at huge cost to get rid of destination inspection firms? Then why this $35 million? This is Gabi saying that the CEO, Valentina Souminta, has been brought in by President Mahama at huge cost. 
Then Gabi continues, another day, Valentina Mintas West Blue was also involved in Nigeria customs, getting rid of destination inspection business. How well did that go? So here you have Gabi, Nana Akomia, Afenyo Marken, all of them, talking about how this contract was inflated, did not go through the right procurement process, that it has come at a huge cost to the Ghanaian, that possibly there's some pecuniary interest, Mahama wants to, 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 to get a bribe out of this contract and all of that. Then suddenly, we are being told that President Mahama didn't pay West Blue enough. Can you believe that? The latest kitchen scandal, simply put, is that despite all of what Ghanaians were told in 2015, 2016 by the MPP about this West Blue contract, saying that it comes at huge cost, it's inflated, no procurement process followed. Going to court, actually, Afenyo Makin tried to secure an injunction against this contract. Suddenly, we are being told by Gabi Asaro Chidago, his law firm, letters he has written, and managing to secure an attorney general's opinion, an opinion we did not include, GRA, GRA's input was not included. The Attorney General himself admits that in his December 16, 2022 legal opinion. And then Gabi is writing to GRA, the board chair, and the new chief director of the Ministry of Finance also writing to GRA, putting pressure on GRA that they have to make this payment. When GRA insists that there is really no basis for this demand. So, Ghanaians must get it. The duplicity, the double standard. And I agree with those who say that we all must worship President Muhammad's God. You know, how those who come after him get exposed in no time. So President Muhammad has inflated this contract. It has come at huge cost to the Ghanaian. There is no value for money. Suddenly, you come to power. You base on that, you do a value for money audit by Crown Agent, terminate the contract. A few years, you are sitting with these people, now representing them, and saying that, forget about all what we said in 2016. Forget about the fact that we said Muhammad has inflated the contract, that they didn't go to procurement process, that there is no value for money. Actually, you know what? President Muhammad didn't pay enough. There is 187.3 million outstanding. So it is incredible. Now let me come to why this claim, the GRA must be supported by the Ghanaian people. The GRA, I must say, have been phenomenal. They have stood very, very firm in the face of bombardment from the Attorney General and the, minist the, 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 the Ministry of Finance. And I must add, Gabi Ochidaku, who writes to them. And you see, Gabi, in his response this morning, wants Ghanaians to believe that I am just a lawyer. Are you saying because I'm the president's cousin, I can't practice my law and represent clients? He conveniently avoids his double standards, the hypocrisy, all the things he said in 2015, 2016, his tweets, which are here. That's him as a politician. This is... Law. He yeah. has a law firm. His law firm has been approached by a client. They believe that on the basis of the client's brief, the client has a course of action. <laughs> they are pursuing that. <laughs> so ridiculous. Look, this same client, mm -hmm. West Blue, had a previous lawyer. Mm -hmm. Isan Kuma was his previous lawyer. And interestingly, government had decided that they would do a, value, a market value audit. In response to that, Isan Kuma wrote this letter. Interesting. Let me just read the last paragraph. As you are aware, the written agreement dated 4th August 2015 that West Blue entered into with the government of Ghana, acting through the Ministry of Finance and the Ghana Revenue Authority for a national single window system and an integrated risk management system did not come into effect as a condition precedent for the agreement to become effective were not fulfilled. 
An agreement that did not become effective cannot be used as a basis for the market value audit. This is what so this is to resist the market value. Yes, okay. and, and, and to say that the agreement didn't come into effect. And, and to be fair to Ace and Kuma, I have the agreement here. If you read clause 3.1.D, Ace is right. If you look at the... But Attorney General disagrees. Conditions precedent. Mm? Conditions the, precedent. For purpose of this agreement, effective date means and shall occur on the day when the following conditions have been fulfilled. This says Crown Agents Ghana Limited has issued a letter to the Ministry of Finance certifying that a successful value for money audit has been completed on this agreement. Now, based on this value for money audit, which arrived on the 11th of August 2017, the finance ministry terminated this contract. Oh. Yes, I have the termination here, signed by Kweku Kwatin on the 26th of January 2018. And I can so read the government relied yes. on the value Condition, for money audit, the condition yes. president to terminate. To terminate the okay. agreement. And West Blue is not challenging the termination. And yes, and West Blue did not challenge. The accepted. Termination. I have okay. the West Blue's acceptance here. Okay. Accepting but, but the now, termination. But now the, the Attorney General's advice is to the extent that, because although the conditions precedents were not met, because both parties proceeded to operate as if there was a contract, there is a basis for a claim. Yes, which is which is. No, I'm just saying. Yes, that's yes, the, that's what the yes. Attorney General. You are right because if you read uh, page four of the Attorney General's advice. The attorney general said, even though the condition precedent mm. for Crown Agents Limited to conduct a successful value for money audit was mm. not carried out, the parties overlooked this fact and performed the obligations under the contract. Very strange. Yeah, yet, because is, yet, is, is yet, it that yet, yet there is a termination? By the same government. By the same government. Ostensibly also on an audit. On, 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 on a value for money advice, yeah. audit, yes. Okay. All right. and, and you see, what is surprising is that if you read Gabby's letters, it's as though he is controlling the Attorney General. He writes, I want a legal opinion. And immediately, it is offered. You know, on this matter, the Attorney General, in less than a year, has issued three legal opinions. Different or same? Same, same. Okay. Legal opinion dated 3rd December 2021. Legal opinion dated 14 April 2022. And then the latest one, 16 December 2022. All piling pressure. And what is interesting, the Attorney General himself Admits, admits mm. that on Tuesday 1st November 2022, this office held a meeting at the office of the Attorney General. Representatives of the Ministry of Finance, GRA, and West Blue were present at the said meeting. West Blue and GRA were given the opportunity to submit a write-up detailing their respective positions by 11th November 2022. Mm. By 15 December 2022, only West Blue had honored the request. And yet, the Attorney General then proceeds to proffer a legal opinion. You are the principal legal advisor for government. Not, not a private entity. Not Gabby. Not the kitchen cabinet. What is, what, is, what, is, what is all of this, Harry? And look, I have been working on other cases. For example, these victims of the president's demolition for the National Cathedral. You know how many times they write to this attorney general? I have dozens of letters. Not even an acknowledgement. Gabby writes... And the Attorney General is running, issuing multiple legal opinions, piling pressure, even when he doesn't have the input. He himself admits in this legal opinion that he doesn't have the input of the GRA. Now, let me quickly respond to but, Gabby. Before you go on, yeah. do you have the 14th of March 2019 letter signed by Kweku Kwatin? Um, um, Terminating the contract. No, payment to West Blue for services rendered post 31st December 2018. Yes, I have that. I have okay. that here. Okay. I have that here. In which the ministry um, conveys government's intention to pay West Blue for services rendered for the period commencing 1st January 2019 and ending on a date to be determined by Cabinet Implementation Committee. And also speaking about a fee equivalent to 0.28% of the final invoice cost insurance uh, for CIF, value for consignment. You yes, have that? yes, I have that. Okay. I have that, and I have the response okay. from West Blue. Okay. So after they terminated the agreement in 2018, mm. they asked West Blue to just hang around under a separate arrangement, to hang around until they are replaced. Mm. And that is what uh, the payment was for. Mm. It is clear from the 4th August 2015 agreement mm. that a condition precedent had not been met, and so the contract had not become effective. 
So I have all of those letters. Now, Gabi wants us to believe that I have rather strengthened the case of, uh, of, of West Blue by leaking these documents and that um, they had been looking for this Attorney General's legal opinion and couldn't find it. I think Gabi must think that we are some zombies, that we are some, you know, yo-yos. Look, his own letters, just pay attention to his letters. For example, this letter Gabi wrote on the 3rd of May 2023 to the Board of Ghana Revenue Authority. Gabi writes, Pursuant to the above GRA Ministry of Finance and our client, and, and, and our client agreeing to furnish the Attorney General with their respective arguments in writing, Addressing the above issues, we submit this letter dated 21st November 2022. Then he continues. However, contrary to the agreement between the parties at the meeting and contrary to GRA and Ministry of Finance assertion that they had evidence to support their position, they have since failed to provide their so-called evidence or any justification whatsoever for their apparently unwavering position. So Gabi knows that GRA, Minister of Finance, have not written to the Attorney General. How did he know? By this letter, Gabi knows that the Attorney General has not received GRA's letter. How did he know? Let me continue. Another interesting observation. As you may be aware, the Attorney General subsequently proffered an opinion on the matter. But GRA and MOF have since failed and or refused to advise us on the opinion delivered by the Attorney General which was requested with the understanding that a copy was to be made available to all the relevant parties. Mm. How did Gabi know? Maybe his head. Uh, Where did he hear? He's well placed. Yeah. Yes. So, so clearly you can see what is at play. Look, we are not kids in this country. This is what Justice Doche mm. famously called create, loot, and share. But I believe that now, under this government, he will have said it's create, loot, and hoard. Or keep. Can I, uh, uh, they, they, they don't share. So, they, so, oh, so, 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 so no, 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 let me conclude. Just, just let me to, conclude. Just For those, those who think that, oh, you know, things were in early stages, um, uh, this payment may not have been made. Let me state that plans were far advanced, three legal opinions secured. And this is the killer. 30th June 2023, the new chief director of the Ministry of Finance. And already, I have been briefed on all kinds of <laughs> rumors about why the, the former chief director was removed based on uh, lack of cooperation on this affair. Now, the new chief director writes to the GRA and telling them that, look, Gabi has served notice. We have only six weeks to pay. The time is almost up. 30th June 2023, I have the letter here, signed by the chief director. It says that Allah in his letter of 3rd May asserts that GRA and Minister of Finance failure to provide response evidence to support George's position, that no arrests are owed to Westbrook, demonstrate that no such justification of evidence exists to deny the client of his legitimate claim. Allah further states that it had a mutual understanding with GRA and MOF would provide to them a copy of the Attorney General Legal Opinion on the interpretation of Clause 13.1. And here again you ask, why does a private entity want a legal opinion? Why? Why is Gabi looking for? Does they, the Attorney they, General work for they, him? They wrote to the Attorney General. They are parties. They are representing clearly, a party. Clearly, they dispute. know what they have done. They want to secure that and strengthen their, their hand. I mean, you, you can see the scheme at play. And thank God it's been unraveled timely. And this money will not be paid. Hey. Then he continues. Lastly... Allah states that various assets belonging to the clients have been withheld by GR with an estimated value of 425000 They have heard that all previous requirements and, uh, requests and demands to recover these assets have been blatantly disregarded. Mm. We are by this letter requesting that your office furnishes the, the Office of the Attorney General with response to the issues outlined mm. in the letter of 24 February 2023 by Allah and provide West Blue with a response to his letter of 10 May 2023. Inundation. The GRA folks were, were virtually thrown under the bus by their own ministry that they have to cooperate and make this payment. So 
It is good that they came to blow the whistle in a timely manner so that we go to town and abort this scheme. And I salute the whistleblowers, the technocrats who have brought all of this to the fore. We would not have known, even MPP members, people like Nana Komia who believed. And by the way, Nana Komia, your claim that Mahama awarded the contract for $300 million, the VFM exposes that, that it's, it's also rather $102 million and not $300 million. Maybe you owe your friend an apology. You know, so this what, is what... What is the basis of the $300 million? In your statement. Your, yeah, what, what, statement did, you did we provide you with a basis? No, you just did said you, that it was something valued. we just conjured. Yes, yes. You just conjured in your own statement. You just conjured it. We just conjured yes, it from yeah, pain. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. All uh, right. Okay. So now yeah. I come to you. But Sami, are you aware of a 28 July 2020 letter mm -hmm. from um, um, Ezankuma to the Ministry of Finance? Uh, okay. The I'm, I'm just trying. I'm, I've been reading Gabby's uh, trade response. Uh, response. Okay. I haven't quite finished. But it, I'm intrigued by some. Uh, assertion that he makes regarding Sami Okujeto, that he says that Sami has been too quick to assign uh, fraud and corruption motives. And motives. Mm. He says it's a scheme when you try to uh, draw his attention to some of the uh, the actions by the Attorney General. He says it's all part of a scheme. So Gabi says that Sami should be careful uh, ascribing motives in this kind of issue and it refers to the accusation against you by the then attorney general that you were putting pressure on then attorney general to pay some monies that i think it was the way you may matter or so that were in court no. so he asked you to be a bit restrained before you ascribe motives but the and and i read from gabby's uh, that the fees by, uh, owed by West Blue depend on the interpretation of the contract. That there's a clause 13 or so that talks about the fees to be a percentage of the CIF. A contract we didn't come into effect by the, the government's own letter, the Kweku Kwatin letter. But it says the contract was extended. <laughs> it wasn't. So the contract they didn't come into it effect. Come into West effect. didn't do any yes, work at and all. And based on that, they terminated and West Blue accepted. So West Blue didn't do any work at all. What they had done, they were paid for. Okay, but that's, say, what they were paid for, that's the dispute. The GRA, which is the Ghana Revenue Authority, is paying them based on inspection fees. The, the West Blue is saying that by the contract, they should be paid a percentage on cost, insurance, and freight. And that is what they've as Gabi to handle. Now, if you make the point that it's a moral issue, that having spoken vehemently, yeah. all of us, yes. against uh, this That's contract, right. then morally, somebody like Ochre Dakun should not be taking it up. Then you are making your point. Yeah, that's, what, that's where I began but, from. Yeah, but no, you're also ascribing fraud and insider dealing and corruption and all of that. Those are your you words. See? Yeah, yeah, it's a scheme and yeah, the scheme, money is going to be paid. We don't have any evidence that the money will be paid. Gabi himself is, in his letter seems to be quite upset that the Ministry of Finance and GRI are not giving them audience. But be that as it may. The same Gabi who told us that this contract was inflated. Be, but in I'm saying be that, yeah, I'm saying if you make that point, because I, speaking for the NPP at the point, made a point, I made a point that President Mahama, by the letter directing that a contract should be given to uh, uh, a particular company was directly interfering in procurement processes and so putting himself in a position of, of a conflict of interest and to be bribed and i and and, and i still stand by it that so aren't you ashamed that gabi is doing this a few years down the line you should be you should, you should be embarrassed I, no i don't speak for, i say that if you raise that moral issue that a, if a different lawyer was handling it, you are going to look at the technical issues. But if Ochoa Dako is handling it, then you're also looking at the morality. That's the point you are making, isn't it? Yeah. But the other issue, and if you make that point, you make it because then yeah. you have all the things that were written about the contract um, before 2016 to back you. But 
if you go on to then ascribe that though it's fraudulent, it's uh, tinted with corruption, it's a scheme to steal money and all of that, you see, then you've ascribed motives. And Gabi is saying that if you do that, you should remember that you also put pressure on an attorney general. I never pay, did that. To pay, well, that's what I, I never said. did that. That's what, that's I, what I, Amidu said. I disputed so that. Anyway. I, I, I took him on. I, I never did that. But is he too? He would dispute this thing I that took, you are I, I was a deputy but minister for information. I received, I received a letter and only forwarded it to him. That's all I did. No, that's not what we I received did. feedback no, as, that, as in, at the information ministry. Okay. Our work is to do uh, government PR Sammy, and I don't, also I don't have a to problem. bring feedback. I that's why we have the ISD. No, I don't, that's I, all I did. I wouldn't say you are lying. Yes, that's all I did. That's not what the attorney general said. So when that is not so when this same person so calls saying, Akufado the mother serpent of corruption, we, no, should, no, okay, okay. we should accept it. Swallow the hook, line, and sinker. So you see, now you have the chance to defend yourself. I'm not saying you are lying or the attorney general is lying. He I'm knows. He is, was most is, unfair to me. This is what he said. So be a little careful or restrained when you are ascribing motives. But if it, the, the, I have I'm been. not saying the, the moral ground that. This was a contract that all of us said was inappropriate and was tainted with um, insider dealing and influence peddling and all of that. And so you don't expect somebody or any of us who's spoken so hard against the contract to be the one championing the contract. It's, it's a good, it's a good uh, mm -hmm. and, and I'll take it. But it's a developing matter. Mm -hmm. Gabi too has said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and I forwarded all these documents to the Finance Committee. Of, of parliament, parliament. Yes. so what's going to so, be the next step so they said they are going to invite all the parties oh, oh. yeah I'm, I'm really yeah. Then, then i rest my case okay. for yeah. me um, this business about talking at each other on various fora mm. it, it gets boring let us bring the issues to the proper institutions mm. and let all the parties come face to face mm. and then let's have a thorough investigation mm. so that we will know so there's a, a bit of a more light mm. will be shared on this. Okay. But these are great issues. So, so I have, I have, I have, I have um, an issue on all these things about, uh, and I classify all this as part of um, so-called judgment debt. Yeah. yeah. Or debt collection. Yeah, but because this one, they didn't go to court De at all. Debt collection or judgment debt. And there's a phenomenon, uh, gentlemen. Yeah. And for me, that's the bigger picture. That's the bigger picture. Yeah. And there's a phenomenon <laughs> of, People who make claims against the state looking for lawyers or law firms that are supposed to have influence or be close to the regime yeah. to do these things on their behalf. Yeah. And I'm not speaking about this. I know. Yes, yeah. this particular yeah. issue. I know, I know. Yeah. If you do, yeah. Yeah. you try and look through. I agree, agree with you. Yes. I agree with you. Yeah, I and agree with you. Yeah. If you like, look at all most uh, people or companies that are making claims yes. against government, mm -hmm. and look at the legal representation. In fact, check what their legal representation was pre. Yeah. You know, and it's yes. it's if you look pre, at pre the government. Yeah. Yeah. Perhaps yeah. the last twenty years yes. or thirty years yeah. or so, you will see. Valid point. A certain trend. Valid. Point. And for me, that's the bigger picture. Yeah. You know that. Yeah. We, we, we ought to look at. But um, no, it's, like it's, you it's said, it's a valid, it's a valid story. point. We'll see, we'll see but you goes. said that the matter is going to come before... The Finance it? Committee. Oh, yes. Uh, I have submitted mm -hmm. it to the leadership. Wonderful. Because all okay. of us are interested mm -hmm. that public monies are not put into danger. Mm -hmm. And we should go beyond talking at each other on various platforms. Mm -hmm. Let's bring the matters to a head before a credible platform, and let's deal with it. So we know right. the public interest will be, will be served. Okay. So, so we have to go. Uh, but it's a holiday. Yes, it is. It's a holiday. I want you guys to... talk about the holiday. The, I want the, you guys to relax. Day and, uh, fun day I'm and, tired of talking about an apostrophe. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I, I, I want you politicians to relax a bit. Yeah. Uh, it's a holiday. But when you bring us here... So I have, something, I have something special for you. Oh, oh really? Yes. So uh, I want, you I want kept you the to, best for last? I want you to have a good laugh before you, you, you well, go. I want to show us something. Yeah, okay. I'm going to show you something. You uh, bring us here to yeah, show us. Just to make you laugh. Are we going to watch it And excite everybody. Hold on. That's good. I got some breakfast or something.
Thank you so much, my baby. Hello, electoral officer. How are you? Hello, Zadi. Something came up, bro. Please don't be angry. My lady's monthly visitor just arrived. I wasn't expecting it today at all, I swear. Hello? Sadi, are you there? Please say something now. Nah. Electoral officer, the election has to be postponed immediately until further notice. Well, Zadi, I'm already dressed up. I was about going to the hotel to wait for you. Now. We cannot be going to the polling unit when elections cannot take place. Well, we can at least spend time together now. Accreditation of voters without them being able to vote is voters' disenfranchisement. Zadi, we can at least call though. Maybe kiss. You know, one of those two. Presenting voters the ballot box without voters being able to thumbprint the ballot paper and cast their vote is a waste of voters time all smart and well trained electoral officers should know the exact date and time voting can take place in their polling units daddy well, you know this thing changes sometimes without we ladies even getting any signs that is electoral inconsistencies as a result of poor maintenance and observation of electoral materials listen to me electoral officer Elections will have to be postponed mm -hmm. in your ward. As parliamentarians, we now have to move to another ward to assess voting opportunities. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Happy holiday. <laughs> Happy holiday. Sounds like something that <laughs> Komiya would do. <laughs> 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 how do you how do, how do we draw? <laughs> Please. I will draw and apologize. <laughs> Up next year, you try to. <laughs>
And to those from the diaspora, aren't you tired of living in places that doesn't belong to you? You can also own your house and be your own landlord from Rehoboth Social Housing Limited. I have my own, but also landlord. <laughs> Contact us now. Rehoboth Social Housing. Your housing dream becomes reality. Right, welcome back to the show. Only the edition of Good Morning Ghana. Time to check out what is trending on social media with Desi. IMG League Cup. Yeah. Mm. Look, it's happening tomorrow. Mm. Yes, so we want all the, the fans to come through mm. and support. Of course, Chelsea will be winning tomorrow. Mm. Um, these days, Doc, you've been quiet on Liverpool. I know um, the news is... I'm thinking of Heart of Lions. Yes, Band of Heart of Lions. Mm. And your first game is against Kodoko. Yes. Yeah, that's nice. Mm. We'll see how that goes. Anyway, uh, welcome. It's time for the trends. My name is Desi Pedi in the star, but let's get into them uh, quickly. Uh, GMG, what's the message? Okay, so on your screen, you see the draw for the games tomorrow. And in Group 8, Real Madrid, Juventus and Hearts of Folk fans will be in the Liverpool, um, Asante Kodoko and uh, AC Milan will be in Group B. And Group C, Man City, Man United and PSG in there. And the group that has the best team, Chelsea, would uh, have Arsenal and Barcelona also in there. So tomorrow it's happening at the Adrian Gano uh, AstroTurf Park. Make sure that you come there. Let's have fun. See everybody. Let's just chill for the day. And uh, let's see who's going to win that coveted uh, trophy and, and take that, that home. Yeah, so it's tomorrow at 8 a.m. Now, so let's get into some of the comments this morning. Uh, GMD. All right, so Maxwell Akpabel says that Samir Okuwan said the free sanitary pad being shared uh, to students was demonic and that he will campaign against the initiative. So I'm not surprised they are taxing sanitary uh, tasks and label, labeling menstruation as luxury. That shows how uh, wicked they are. Hashtag good morning, uh, Ghana. Moving on to the next one. Isaac Noam says, who did Baumia direct his 170 questions to? I want him, Baumia, to take all those questions and answer them for himself in line with the reality. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Emmanuel of Yagbo says, Danakumia, if you don't know, we endorse JDM because we realized he has performed better than Akufado Baumia joined together. And to the final, Audemud Sass says that Baumia is a threat to the NDC. Like, seriously, this uh, Nanapa, is it not this Nana who said NPP would win the Asin North by election massively? Okay. So that's from Audu. There, thank you very much for your messages on Twitter, of course. Mm -hmm. Always hashtag good morning, Ghana GMG, or also on Facebook. Many thanks for that. Let's move on to the next one and talk about ECOWAS. ECOWAS has been trending for a while, and it's because of what's happening in Niger. And uh, on Twitter, you see that the Nigerian army are on the border that is shared with Niger, and a lot of things coming in that there's going to be military intervention and all, and all of those things. And people are sharing their thoughts about that. It's, it's a very um, you know, serious thing. And uh, let's look at some of the comments 
that have come in. Uh, this one says that ECOWAS is, is a toothless block, having condoned democratic coup in the Sam region, but have also military coups. Such absurdity that U.S. Tinubu is in court, Ivory Coast Watara in a third term, Togo's Nyasingbe 20 years of power, etc. What moral rights do you have? ECOWAS. That's from MP Quartin writing that on uh, Twitter about ECOWAS. Uh, moving on to the next. Uh, Moses says that what exactly is the role of ECOWAS? If you can't amass the energy and resources to the benefits of the videos from the past. Okay. All right. So I have another one for the holiday. Hey. And that's how I want to wrap up <laughs> uh, today's show. <laughs> <laughs> KSM and Super Audi. Oh, okay. That's a combo. <laughs> Right. You have to do the right things. Mm. So you're doing the right things? Yes, I have to do the right things. I know myself. Which are, which are the right things? Oh, somebody, you know Ghana, if you are popular like this, somebody swipes, or you can tell somebody that, give me this thing, I will do this thing for you. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is out of me. Okay, 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 <laughs> okay. So you, you don't take advantage of people with your popularity? Yeah, yeah. because God give me. So I must care of it very, very well. Yes. If you die, I go there and say, Kweku, you are good. You are good, so come to me. Come to me. <laughs> That's Odi's very good. But Supodi, how did you begin? When did you start getting into comedy? Because you are the godfathers. We are just following your trail. Uh, for the comedy, comedy work, I started about a 19... 70, 70s, when the city sack came to Yes, play. that's when I saw you. Yeah. Yes. That was my first comedy at a class for state. Really? Yeah. That, that, that time I make a. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Give us a little bit of that. This is remember what you did. Uh, that commentary. <laughs> I did it. Uh, give, give me. Can you, can you give us. Oh! Play back. <laughs> Because there are so many young ones out there who don't know anything of what I'm talking about. Look, Brian say, Ghana for you in Nigeria for Bobo Ball. Yeah. They are press, but they are outside the same book. Press are on doing the colonial days. Ofe Dodo, Asebi Buache, Agrifin, Yala, Aqua, Edward. Oh, we have got so many press. Tough, tough one. You were press, Papa. You are not press, yeah. Or man, and you say electric wise, yeah. But we go over the background. We are paying eight million. Some, some, over the bank, eight million. Some, you know, we start on Hindi Jai. No, only the blaster. We are born. We born same. Yala, yala. No, we can't. We are so unpeka. We are so meta. We are so shana baji. We are so shwa ubaji. We are so shwa ubaji. We are so shwa ubaji. What did Nigeria from so I did by Ogani, Abibu, Salami, Otaba, Oguru, Tunjele, Oniawoni, Oguadaka, Obeju, Alatayam. Now for women, we do more. Well, Sabre Naya Class Four Stadium. Yeah. We are going to call Sabre Naya say the first president of Ghana. Osa Osa Jufu Doctor Kwame Nkrumah. Osiye Konjom. Ne mi sini chao. Na sini chao. Mi sini chao pe. Wow. Wamu esre. Maybe I'm not now one yet. Anche. Ye usa Ghana Black Star. Have a friend. Usa me me me. Ne ntu ma ne ntu umfum nom. Yeah. Anche. Ne Nigeria for no swaba. Ne sa u a comment box nom. Now he filled the one. Now who Nigeria for no anima. We we'll say yes. These people come from Abi Ekuta. Yes. What? Obi ane ni hum aha for aha for each person. Ghana for ni ina to to Nigeria for na to to. La Fridge La Santa, Gold Coast, Goki Pan or Chibot. We say Robert Mensa. We friend do do ankra. Nama one case inside the pool. Santa forward. Nama nine unfum from Kumasi Asante Kotoko. Nigeria Goki Pan. Nama one Olemi. Santa forward, number nine, Tafa. <laughs> Last man, call red. Serious, send the ball to Abba. Abba blocking the ball, long run to Azifin. 
I will finish the ball. Long run to Aqua. Aqua to Yala. Yala blocking the ball. B to a man. B to another man. Ghana, Ghana boys are taking over. Long run to Agrifin. Agrifin blocking the ball. Watch inside and side. B to a man. B to another man. B three man at a time. Beautiful Agri. Around the center circle. Inside the center circle. Out of the center circle. Inside the 18. <laughs> Kofi Fadi is there. Long run to Fedodu. Fedodu chest the ball. Moving the ball with him recovery. Send the ball to Aqua. Aqua blocking the ball. Long run to Kofi Fadi again. Kofi Fadi blocking the ball. It's a chance for Ghana. Kofi Fadi is dead. Now we are going in the way. It's a goal. <laughs> <laughs> and that is super OG. The legend. Yes. I was calculating when this video was actually mm. shown. I don't, I don't know. Look, when was it? You should look at the uh, KSI. I, yes, I see that. I see mm. that he was really young then. Mm. So this should be like when 20 years ago? There about. At mm. least I saw the world at that time. 20 years ago? Yes. Okay. Unless it's more than 30. Okay. You, were, you were yet to go to class one, right? I guess. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, I was seven by then. So 20 class years. Class two. Class three. Class two, class, class three. three. There about. Yeah. Mm. All right. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yalla. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's Baba Yara. Baba Yara, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yalla, yalla, yalla. So now you've, you've, I'm sure you've heard that commentary on radio. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that several times. Now you've seen it live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, make sure the video of God. Yalla. When Phil says that, then it's, it's Lebanese. Oh, okay. He's trying to. Uh, ah, uh, oh, like Harry. Harry. Yalla. Oh, Harry. Yalla. oh, go, 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 go. Mm. <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> anyway, that will be dog. All right. So tomorrow, IMG League. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sure that there will be a lot more about that on Metro Sports. Definitely. Uh, coming definitely. next yeah, uh, yeah. with Michael O'Dre and his team. Yep. All right. So enjoy the holiday. Oh. We'll see you. The what is it? Uh, okay. <laughs> Whatever it is, enjoy it. <laughs> 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 I'm next Metro Sports. <laughs>